are interrelated but different things. With the increment in our knowledge, we need to develop wisdom. So our knowledge is always controlled and guided by wisdom. Knowledge without wisdom is destructive or knowledge without wisdom can be destructive. So he talks about three things that should be with the knowledge elevation. Sense of proportion, comparativeness, and depth of feeling. Uh, we will talk about what sense of proportion as well. Uh, of studies uh, where uh, that Francis Bacon talks about why people study. Basically, he puts forward three purposes of studying for ornament, for pleasure, for knowledge. Because study determines our social status. Right? When we go for different courses of study, it determines our social status. Then we study for entertainment as well. Here, study means watching different movies in study, reading textbooks is study, going for certain courses study. The term study has been used in a broader sense here. And uh, according to Bacon, we study uh, different books differently. According to our purpose, we use different methods of reading. Right? Or we read different texts differently. Some texts are to be chewed, some texts are to be shallowed, and some texts are to be tested. Uh, I have uploaded this file for you. You can go through this once again. Now let me take you to this text, uh, text the mother of a traitor. Third text, the mother of a traitor. So here is the story. I have written a story. Uh, just uh, you, you can go through the summary once again. But just let me talk about what is this text First, there are uh, two main characters in this text, two main characters in this story. The mother of a traitor named Mona Marina and her son. There are two characters. The mother or Mona Marina is the queen and her son is a prince and traitor. There are two main characters. Mother, Mona Marina, and traitor, Prince, Asha. This text basically talks about the dual love of, of Mona Marina or the conflict that Mona Marina faces all the time. But this text talks about conflict in Mona Marina's mind. I will talk about what that conflict is. So let me summarize the story. Here are two characters, Mona Marina, a queen, and her son, Prince, and he's a traitor. So as a queen of the state, Mona Marina wants to maintain peace, prosperity in the society. She wants to see her countrymen, her people, very happy and cheerful. She tries her best to improve the life of the people. She wants to see her people always happy. On the other hand, her son is really cruel. He exploits people. He tortures people. He just uses people for his personal benefit. He does whatever he likes to do without caring about feelings, emotions of the people, social status of the people. He ignores his and everything. He just wants to satisfy his hunger. He wants to destroy the city and wants to become popular among the citizens. Prince wants that 
each citizen and each and every object of the country should know his name and get afraid of him. Look, this is the nature of the prince or the traitor. He exploits people according to his wish. He wants to hear his name from all the people of the country. He wants praise from the people. So there is contradiction between uh, the nature of the mother and the son. Mother wants to maintain peace and prosperity. Son, very cruel. Then the mother or Mona Marina tries her best to convince her son not to do that, not to exploit the people, right? Not to work for the fame. Think about the prosperity of the people, but her son doesn't follow her instructions. He repeatedly tortures people, exploits people. You know, echo, he creates just restlessness everywhere in the city. And no one is happy with uh, the traitor's actions. And then it creates tension in the mind of the Mon Mona Marina. Now Mona Marina has two options, whether to save herself or save the city, save the state. What to save? Which one to save? Whether to save herself or save the state, save the city. She thinks a lot. And this text deals with the dual love of Mona Marina. Dual love. Love for the country and love for the sun. So, problem is if there is sun, the country cannot be prosperous. So, Mona Marina has to decide whether to save the country or whether to save the son. She tries her best to convince her son not to, you know, act in that way. But her son is not ready to follow her. And the, the same conflict in Mother uh, Mona Marina's mind, whether to save the son or save the city, save the country. Which one to save? Then Mona Marina decided that country, nation, city, state, these things are greater than your son. And as a true ruler, one should be ready to sacrifice her life for the sake of the nation, for the sake of the state for the sake of the city or for the sake of other people. We should not always be only self-centered. We should think about others. So, Mona Marina decides that the country, the city is greater than her own son. So, she becomes ready to kill her son for the sake of the city its people and one day Mona Marina calls her son made him just sleep in her lap and stabs him to death why he see he stabs she wants to make all the people free from the cruel actions of her son she kills her son. Then the pain of killing her son is unbearable for Mona Marina. She can't bear that pain. And this happens with everyone, we know. Then 
Mona Marina stabs herself to death. So the main conflict in Mona Marina's mind is that whether to save the country or save herself. As she thinks that the country, the country folks are greater than her own son, she stabs her son to death and stabs herself to death because the pain of killing her son is unbearable for her. So this text presents the idea that as a true ruler, we should not only think about our needs, our desires. More than that, we should think about other people's needs, other people's desires. Our main intention should be to make other people happy, not, you know, just keeping oneself happy. And this text proves that human beings are not all the time selfish animal. They can be selfless animal as well. They can sacrifice their life for the betterment of others. This is the moral lesson presented by the text. And the main question from this text can be, what is the conflict in Mona Marina's mind and how did she resolve it? Main conflict is conflict of dual love, whether to subsume a country or the city. How she resolve it? She sacrifices her life, her son's life for the betterment of the people of the country. This is the text all over. To go through this very short one, you will find it quite interesting. Uh, we, we dealt with the mother of a traitor as well. Now I want to take you to another text. Okay, so we uh, did uh, knowledge and wisdom, the mother of a traitor of studies. Now, let me take you to this text, Use and Misuse of Science. We will deal with what Einstein did and how much land does a man need as well. So, Use and Misuse of Science, what Einstein did. You can answer to this question in your own way, even if we don't go through these texts. But just uh, let me uh, just take you through this text very quickly and you hear are the summaries, you will go through them. Use and misuse of science. So, from this text, use and misuse of science is how the science has been used and misused in the 21st century. How science has been used and misused in the 21st century. Here are the summaries of other texts as well, but these texts are not basically for you. Uh, but you can go through the text as well. Okay, the use and misuse of science. So the first scientist of the world is prehistoric woman. He used prehistoric man should be there, otherwise you use uh, all the time man we use, but we can use woman as well. So the first scientist is prehistoric man. He used his brain to invent the simplest device to make his life less painful. Science started its humble journey from that day. So when science started its humble journey, when a man just thought about the fire, to cook his food. At that moment, the journey of the science started. Science grew richer and richer, and it has reached its golden age today. It has revolutionized people so thoroughly that we like to call this age of science. It is science that tells the modern people how to live. In the 21st century, science tells people how to live, how to eat, how to work, how to enjoy their life. 
That means people in the 21st century are heavily depend on scientific inventions. They want to do each and everything or they are doing each and everything with the help of scientific inventions. And even we talked about the idea that human beings have become slaves of their own scientific inventions as well. They spend their time feeding uh, or taking care of these scientific inventions, you know, different electronic gadgets. They, they spend more time with scientific inventions than with their family members. They talk to these scientific inventions. They enjoy with scientific inventions rather than with their family members. We talked about that idea earlier. So here, our basic focus will be on use and misuse of science. How science has been used, how science has been misused. So you can write how science has been used. You can talk about science has modernized our homes. You can talk about cooler fans, fans, ACs. You can talk about the decoration in the kitchen. Each and everything. Right? So science has modernized our homes. With the help of the science and scientific inventions, we can live in the place where the temperature is below zero degrees centigrade. Where the temperature is, you know, uh, 56 degrees centigrade. So we can live in the very hot places, very cold places with the help of the science. So science has made or scientific inventions has made this world like a global village. We can communicate with the people who are far from us. We can talk to people who are far from us. We can travel from one place to another very quickly. That means science has made this world as a global village, just like a village. You, you can talk about different social medias, you can talk about Google, you can talk about internet sources, how people are communicating. This is all due to... These are all scientific products. We can read, we can hear, we can listen about the events or occurrences in the world. Even we can know each and everything uh, about the world just by sitting in our room. This is due to science. These different, you know, social medias, internet sources, radios, televisions, adds to our knowledge and pleasure. These different social medias gives us pleasure as well as adds to our knowledge. These telephones, mobile phones are important communication devices. We can talk to people who are far from us. Science has given us life-saving drugs. and medical facilities. You can talk about different trains, buses, planes, motor cars, which have made our journey quicker and more comfortable. And you can talk about medical facilities, life-saving drugs, these are all the product of science or scientific products. So in this way, you can talk about the uses of science. How the science has been misused? This is more important thing. First thing how science has been misused is human beings are over dependent on scientific inventions. This is the first thing. We are over dependent. We have become slave of our own scientific invention. First misuse of science. Look, we don't work nowadays. We use different vehicles. We don't carry different goods ourselves. We use different vehicles. This, we don't talk to people. Or there is no, you know, 
physical connection between the people. They use different social medias to talk to them. So this science has deteriorated human relationships. You can talk about the misuse of different social medias, how you know different television, social medias circulate fake news to brain out, brainwash the mind of the people. You can talk about how young people or school children spend their valuable time watching television or surfing an internet without any purpose. You can talk about the crimes taking place due to these scientific inventions. You can talk about the uh, two bombs dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which have made uh, the place or the land unproductive. And still people suffer from the effects of the attack. So human beings have invented different atom bombs to destroy the world, to take the life of the people, to take the life of the innocent people. You can present the incidents of look some places, some countries that took place recently. So uh, there are different industries. These industries produce, you know, harmful gases. Or the industrial and vehicular pollution is a major harmful effect of the abusive of uses of science. These industries, different vehicles are the product of science, but these produce harmful gases. There is a greenhouse effect due to these, you know, industries producing very, you know, uh, dangerous smoke. So you can talk about the, our overdependence. You can talk about, you know, uh, the different accidents taking place every day, every year. These are the misuses of science. You can add many more. Don't depend on whatever I have written here. Right. For example, if I talk about uh, or if I can talk about the five uh, misuses of science, next people can talk about five. Next can talk about five and you can write 50, 60 misuses of science. Right. So don't depend heavily on these things, whatever I have written, you can write in your own ways. Just my duty is to guide you. Fine. So this is all about use and misuse of science. Always one question will be from this text, how science has been used or misused in the 21st century. Right. You just think about it and you, you can write the things. This is use and misuse of science. Okay, now let me take you to another text. That is what Einstein did. Yes, you, you can write about it. What Einstein did. OK, so what Einstein did, the question from this text is uh, Albert Einstein is the greatest genius of 20th century explain or explain the contribution of Einstein. To the modern scientific world. Einstein is the greatest genius of 20th century explain or Einstein or explain the Einstein's contributions to the modern scientific world. So you can write about it. I have written so many things here. I have talked about, you know, the text is taken from no need to go through these things. You can talk about the Brownian motion of Albert Einstein. 
relate, relativity theory of Albert Einstein, right? So uh, relativity theory of relativity, I have talked here about that. And you can talk about spatial relativity theory, then uh, time dilation, his book on time dilation, like E, e variable MC square, you can talk about this. And these are just the, some of the works of Albert Einstein. And these works contributed a lot or have contributed a lot to the modern scientific world. You can talk about the use of this uh, e barabar mc square. You can talk about the use of uh, his uh, relativity theory. You can talk about the use of his Brownian motion. And all these things I have explained the things here. You just once again go through this and you will be clear about that. Another text I want to talk uh, about is how much land does a man need? How much land does a man need? So here, the writer Leo Tolstoy talks about the greed of the human being. The greed of the human being. According to Tolstoy, there is no limitation of human greed. There is no limitation of human greed. Human beings wants to possess the things that are of no use for them. We want or human beings want the things that they do not need in their life. The greed of human being can never be fulfilled. Tolstoy presents or makes this idea clear with the help of one example. He talks about the land. He talks about the land. That means human beings never remain satisfied with whatever they have. They want more. They want more. So if we want to remain satisfied, we should be content with whatever we have. We should avoid this desire of getting more and more every day. So here Tolstoy talks about the moral problems in human life. Human beings are morally corrupted. There is a spiritual crisis in the world. So what happens when there is the lack of morality and spiritual crisis? People, you know, just involved in different crimes. People become totally greedy. People are always uh, run behind the temptation. They don't know the value of the greed. They don't know the value of human need. So when we are spiritually corrupted, we desire more. This is what Tolosti says. And Tolosti argues that human beings or the desire, human desire has no limitation. Here I have written, it suggests that Human desire has no limitation. Man desires to take possession of more than they need in benefit of themselves. Look, we desire that we don't need. What happens when we desire that we don't need? Other people will be in problem. If we want to, you know, earn each and everything for oneself. If 
we want to possess each and everything, what happens? Other people will remain in trouble. Other people will face trouble. And when we become greedy, we just uh, involve in crimes as well. In the 21st century, most of the crimes are taking place because of the greed of the human beings. So thus greed has no specific boundaries that ultimately lead life to death. Greed has no specific boundaries. So here the writer uh, talks about a person that pound and who has a greed for the land to possess more and more land though the person doesn't need that much of land. The person can satisfy all his desires with the help of some land, but he wants to achieve more and more land. Here is the example you go through this. Main idea is human desires have no limitation and due to this greed and uh, ambition, human beings in, involve in different crimes and they just lose spirituality due to that as well. You go through this here analytical part as well. Uh, you will be going through this and you will be clear about each and everything. So focus on these texts. Uh, here, uh, just I have listed the summary of the other, other texts as well, but questions will be from these texts. Uh, for your pleasure, uh, you can uh, just uh, go through other texts as well, like uh, Miracles of Brass, uh, you know, uh, next other text as well. Listed uh, Miracles of Grass as well, and then Scientific Attitude, I think, as well. Uh, the Scientific Attitude, you go through this very short text, this is also, and What Einstein did, you will be going through this text. State and critical forward thinking. Here, the writer uh, talks about, uh, about the value of critical thinking in human life. You know that. The miracles of grass, you can talk about the mystery of the grass. You, you can go through the rest of the text as well. But most important text for the students of B and E are these six texts. If you just talk about the exam questions, you will be asked questions from these portions. Uh, for your pleasure, you can go through the rest of the text as well. So we, we completed, in this way, we completed this uh, reading comprehension part as well. We, we did this reading comprehension part as well. So after this, we have to deal with just a single thing. What is that? Can you remember? We, we dealt with almost all the things that are in our slabs and we have to deal with one last thing, one topic after this. What is that? We can remember. What do we happen to discuss yet? Writing proposals. Yes, writing proposals. Just one thing remaining, that is writing proposal. And we need a class for that. So uh, what do you think? Should I start a writing proposal today or on Tuesday? What do you say? Uh, it, it takes time. It takes time because and I want to just do writing proposal in a single class because, you know, uh, doing half portion in one class and half portion in another class that that just uh, loses the beauty. So what do you think? should I start the writing proposal uh, portion today or uh, shall we start that in our next class? Next Let's class do it in our next class. Next class. Okay. So uh, I will upload this file for you. You seriously go through this and uh, I, will, I will just uh, upload complete note as well. I have uploaded all the things, but uh, you know, uh, separately, but I will just uh, copy and paste them in a single document and I will upload that file on Tuesday, not today. Uh, today I will just upload this file, reading comprehension. You go through this, right? You have a time, go through this and 
in our next class uh, probably we will wrap up the course as well but we will have presentations later on but uh, we will just uh, wrap up the uh, this theoretical part and we will be dealing with uh, writing proposal in our next class or that is on uh, tuesday thank you thank you sir thank you sir sorry your phone